You know, I've been thinking about you finishing off that rap from last week. Uh. That was pretty good. No problem, man. I'll do it again. Mm. My name is Jason, and I like to rap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to come up with some more, with some more rhymes. <laughs> All right. Welcome to Mini Biking Ain't Easy Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Merrill. Alongside me, I have producer Zane. What's up? And then on the one, twos, and threes, I got my main man, Bernie. Yo, yo. <laughs> and our special guest today, Andrew Porter. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, woo! Finally did on time. Oh my gosh, I got the sound cue right. <laughs> so what's up, Andrew? Not much. Just here visiting the warehouse. This is my first time meeting you, but you are a legend. I don't know if I'd say that. But, <laughs> but give me a little bit of your background. So you, I know you as a mini bike racer who was fast. Since that's all I know, take me back. So my dad had got me into BMX when I was four. I just showed up to a track and didn't even have a helmet, just had a bike. And I think I was riding my older brother's bike. I lined up at the gate. I rented a helmet, but then I went off the gate my first time going around the track. And I was looking at my dad. I wasn't even paying attention where I was going. And then I fell off the track. Oh, no. <laughs> but then I got up and then a year later, I won state at five years old for oh, my so division. Oh. Did that for a couple years, and then when I was six, my dad had bought me and my older brother a dirt bike. He called us out of school, and I was like, why is he calling us out of school? You know, it's never does that. And we get home, and he raises the garage, and there's a Honda 50cc sitting in the garage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was my first one, too. (laughs) Yeah, it was awesome, and we had a farm. We'd go up there and ride dirt bikes and four-wheelers and stuff, and then got into racing dirt bikes a little bit, doing Supercross, racing out in Wichita, Kansas, and and then back in 2019 is when I got my first mini bike. I had went to a friend's 4th of July party and he had old Honda 50 as well from like the 70s or 80s. And then around back, he had a Monster Moto 80. Everything original was still on it and he had a flat tire. And he's like, you know, I don't ride this anymore. He's like, if you want to fix it up, he's like, you can have it free. And I was like, nice. yeah, sure. And I didn't really know much about mini bikes at the time. So I got it home, changed the rear tire since it was flat, basically changed the oil, put gas in it and went off on this little lady and I'm like I'm a little too big for this ADCC <laughs> and then my dad had seen videos of like cars and cameras and I believe it's Jason explains everything yep. doing the gambler up in Oregon yep. and videos on putting the Predator 212s on the engines or on the bikes just one day I'd brought it home and he's like let's go ahead and do this eventually and I was like well let's do it today he's like today I was like yeah because if we don't do it today we're gonna procrastinate I was like I want to get it done so we bought the engine got it put on the bike and I saw group down here in Texas that races and went to a race and bone stock bike got third nice and then I was hooked from there on so third on that 80 mm-hmm. with the 212 bone stock would it even have front suspension on it no it was a completely <laughs> rigid frame so what was the group that you came across tomb okay yeah it was tomb so you did tomb so the Facebook and then you showed up to one of the tomb races uh, yeah now do you remember which track that was at or where it was the Needville Harvest Festival pretty it was far down south i can't remember exactly what town okay all right i guess it was needville needville adjacent so then you got hooked so where does it progress from there you then put a stage one kit on there just keep riding stock or what i did put a stage one kit on and then wichita they had a little gambler thing it was on a small dirt bike track so i did that if you won you kept racing and i was the first race and i kept winning so i just basically went till the very end and eventually said all right i gotta take a break on too many races in a row so that we took a quick quick break and then i finished out i pretty much raced everybody nice. there did your own little like 100 man kumite thing. pretty much wow. there were probably 20 of us and they would do three at a time so it was basically me and then i'd go against two other people and we just went till i got through everybody was it a circle track flat track it was like a condensed dirt bike track it had okay. jumps and Ooh. sand sections and, wow. and that was on my little 80 so i was pushing it pretty hard <laughs> <laughs> now you still racing that 80 around not at the moment i built it and gave it to some neighbor kids okay back home Whoa, nice, nice. man. Yeah. So what do you ride now? For Enduro, I ride a Coleman, the CT200 flat track. I've got a couple doodle bugs. And then going to be building the Megamoto 80 with the swing arm kit as well. He already has a swing arm kit. I got the swing arm kit. I just got to get the 80 now. The gotcha, frame. man. The thing you said before, the like, oh, if we don't do it today, we're going to procrastinate. Is that like a common theme for you? Do you like make a point of like, I'm going to do this thing today because I thought about it. And if I don't do it now, it's not going to get done. Not typically. I just knew (laughs) that since we were getting into it and we weren't really sure, I wanted to get it done now and just start racing because I'd kind of seen the groups. Me, if if something breaks, as soon as I get 
parts in. Get it fixed and start running again. Okay. So. Got you, man. Now, have you thought about, I guess, upgrading to like a Trailmaster? Do you not like having rear suspension on, on your bigger bike? I do like the rear suspension. It's a lot of fun. I do like the hardtails, though, because I think it gives you another challenge. Mm -hmm. It's harder on you as a rider as well as the bike. You got to make sure your bike is well maintained. You can't go as fast. That is true as a trail master, but I feel like skill level, it's harder on you and pushes you to a different level hmm. on the hardtails. Okay. But I do love the trail masters and would like to get one someday and race it in the 180. Now, which one of those Coleman's do you have? Is it the 200U or the EX? Or? Yeah, the EX. Okay, so you at least have front suspension. Yeah. Were you at the last 180 race? I was at the last 180 race. How well did you do? Me and my dad were doing pretty good. I know people have different opinions on how to do that race. Some people like to pace themselves. I like to go as fast as I can and push the limits of the bike as well. I know some people are like, you're going to burn yourself out. Well, I try and train so I can go a long period of time. Started in first three laps, which I know isn't the end result. Third lap going down, pucker up buttercup, my handlebar snapped. What do you mean? Like snap or just yep. so I'm riding, And then I go down and I kind of notice my left one goes down and all of a sudden it just drops and I oh, fall. Oh, wow. oh, oh no. So got it back to the pits. We had brought my dad's bike, put the different handlebars on and went going again. And then my dad had a crash. Then I took over basically the rest of the race, rode probably the last hour by myself. And then after going to the top of the hill and going into Sherwood Forest, the second time I got through the first two corners, how it happened, I'm not really sure, but the bike had split. I think the bottom nut that goes through the steering column had came off. The bolt had somehow came out, but it was still intact with, I guess, the front suspension. It was really weird. I had 30 minutes left. So did you wreck hard off of that one? Or you just saw it all come loose? I knew. I had 30 minutes left and I saw it, or had went down, it split from me. I went out to get Flacco's attention. He came in and we drug it out of the forest to get it out of the way. <sighs> and I stood at the top of the hill the rest of the race talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to say, do you have any idea how what place you came in? Fifth. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. that's still really good. We had a couple problems. Like I said, the handlebars slowed us up. And then obviously with 30 minutes left, the yeah. bike splitting was a big, <laughs> was the end of the race. I had another weird thing after my dad had crashed. I went to go get right out of the pits and my throttle cable had snapped on mm. my Makuni, which was weird. I'd never had that happen before. So I went back, got that change and then went back out. But it's kind of small stuff here still and there. got fifth though still got fifth yeah, yeah. you were pushing it at the time with 30 minutes left my dad's like you're sitting in second he's like i doubt you can grab first there are two laps ahead i was like okay i'm just gonna keep riding and hopefully get second and then the bike split at the top of the hill and that was it so <laughs> you've learned a lot from this race yes. and you plan on being at our third go power sports 180 yes. race yes okay so with this knowledge what are you going to do differently obviously you lock tight on the nut <laughs> <laughs> through the steering column <laughs> So that don't come off. Yeah. Got reinforced handlebars. And then one thing me and my dad are talking about right now is try and get a bigger gas tank to reduce fill up time. Also faster way to fill up when you have to. That way you just like shoot it in there and you go mm -hmm. and then move. On the Coleman's, I was talking to Bernie about it. They'll sit up really far up front. And I thought about getting foot peg relocation kit, but Coleman's have that bar that run underneath the yes. bottom plate. I got to figure out something to move the foot pegs back so I can stay stand up going down those rocks now were you at the first go power sports 180 yes i was how'd you do on that one i also talked to bernie about this the night before my bike got stolen out of the back of my truck oh what man we stayed the night there i mean of course we weren't looking for these we didn't we don't have an extra bike or anything but yeah. dang that stinks yeah me and my dad stayed and he's like i don't want to he's like he's in his mid 50s sorry dad he's like <laughs> i don't want to camp he's like i want to stay at a hotel like, all right so we stayed at a hotel and i had it locked up and everything thing and they cut through the chain and my tailgate locked too so they went and pulled it over my tailgate and scratched the back of my tailgate oh okay this was at They're the hotel going, that yeah, they stole yeah, from yeah oh how sorry is that yeah but luckily someone had an extra bike and i still rode and nice had a good time yeah if that ever happens again let us know we'll be glad yeah. to lend you a bike yeah yeah so since you've been at both of the 180s so far what do you like about them what do you think we could improve on the first one i really like the speed of the track mm. since it was more of a dirt bike track i was looking forward to going to that again but i did really like the ranch because that's kind of why i originally got into racing was the enduro style and the rocks and the trails so i really like that i know people had said you know they want more straightaways i get it but i thought it was honestly a really good track yeah i thought you had the hills you had the drop-offs 
rock, and you had a couple speed sections. I thought it was perfect, honestly. For what I like, some people thought it might have been too much or not. An, I don't know. I thought it was a good <laughs> challenge because you had, what, maybe a quarter of the bikes finish the race. Yeah. So a lot of people, I would assume, are going to make changes Oh yeah. to finish the race this year. So in our hearts, it is endurance, and then we do want to test your bike to its limits. That and just to be able to make it feel like you're on an adventure. I mean, that's what it is because there's so many different terrains, and you're going through the forest. So peek behind you know the curtain taylor's going to go through and add another mile or two to the track because there's so much scenic area on that land mm. he kind of wants to show you guys more of the property so you'll have more off-road riding like towards the back end like down where the power lines were yeah i heard that this so you're going to go up higher yeah then we also towards the front it's a lot flatter we want to get some jumps or at least a jump or a tabletop in there personally just because i want to take photos of people <laughs> yeah. doing jumps yeah I think that's awesome. That's what was fun about number one because there yeah. were some jumps on there. They, I mean, it's not going to be as gnarly as those, yeah. <laughs> but something just to catch some air. Yeah. I mean, some people got some air on that hairpin turn that we had. Yes. Going back up, people yeah. got some good air there. So give them another chance up front and also another peak. We plan on jumping a fire so that we need like a little <laughs> jump, light some fire, maybe make a ring of fire so we can jump into it as well. <laughs> oh, kind of do like a, like the Spartan race. At the end of the Spartan race, they always have that <laughs> yeah. big fire pit that you yeah. jump over to finish it yes That'd call it trial cool. by fire that's yes. our last obstacle in the course <laughs> so no, thanks for knowing all the names of the different parts in the race we spent a lot of time oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure would one <laughs> sure would two yeah <laughs> well no everyone knows pucker up buttercup yeah like yeah. everyone's like yeah that one is aptly named yeah. because yeah. you know just sphincter wise like yes. you know <laughs> <laughs> i did see a few people eat it there yeah. hopefully oh, that's not yeah. where your dad ate it yeah, it is. Oh, man. I may have seen him, too. Broke Got it. a picture of it? Oh, I may have. Wait, he broke his collarbone? Yeah. Oh, dang. He's well, recovering so he can race in the second one. He actually just got cleared to ride mini bikes again. Shouts out to Pops. Hopefully <laughs> you're feeling better. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm sorry to hear that. He got back and he, oh, man, I'm really hurting. But I didn't think it was that bad because he acted like it was just going to take a couple of days and he's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. But. Sure or a enough. couple months later. Yep, he had to have surgery. And, oh, man. Oh, no. Yeah. Don't let that discourage you from coming out to race, please. What, is he going to wear, like, shoulder pads or something this time? Or he might. Just to be safe? Yeah. Well, now his collarbone is more machine than man, that so he's true. stronger, right? That is true. Yeah, just titanium everywhere. All on purpose. Yes. <laughs> All right, we are going to take a quick break. We'll be back after these messages from our sponsors. They can't see you, just tell us who we're looking for. Okay. That's it, number four. Are you sure? Yes. No, number two. So, number two? I don't know, they, they all look so dope. Our 10-inch modular steel wheels come in four classic colors that'll make your bike stand out. Choosing just one is gonna be the hardest part. And for a limited time, they're only $49.95 each. Really? I'll take all of them. Good call. Available at Go Power Sports and www.gopowersports.com. Okay, I think that's it, right? Got it. Got it. And we're back. All right, Andrew. So you just finished the Line 100. Yeah. So tell me that story about Line 100, about you showing up. What happened? How did you finish it out? Originally, I was going to race hardtail. Mark had to make some adjustments to the track because of the rain the previous days. I only had one run through on the parade lap, and there was a section in the back where there was an arrow saying to turn when the turn was actually a little bit sooner, but where that arrow was, it was like a Jeep mud hole, essentially, mm. and it kind of went up to my knees. And so when my race had started for hardtail, I had taken off and was in first. And then I had stopped and didn't recognize this portion of the track. It was a deep mud hole. And I was like, I don't remember this at all. And I knew I had someone coming up behind me. And then eventually caught up to me and went around me. And I was like, I just got to go. So I went through the hole, the mud hole, basically sucked water in my engine. And oh. 
that was the start of the downfall essentially so i got back and luckily they in my favor anyway not the guy that had passed me but they had a problem with the scoring system so we went back restarted and then i was in first for like six laps and then sucked in too much water through my carb and basically blew up my engine so i was looking for parts to repair it the oil seal around the crankshaft i was looking for an oil seal no one had one so then i was like i'll just drop out and then i was like where's taylor at at and found Taylor's like you got a bike for me to ride and luckily he did and you guys let me ride the, the Megamoto 212 with your swing arm kit mm. so I was like hey Mark is it right if I ride this or switch classes and everything he's like yeah that's fine then we started off again I was in four behind David Rogers Carl and a guy named Tristan we were going down the back stretch got through the woods and everything and I was right on their tail but in through the woods you can't really pass it was so condensed and you had had tree stumps everywhere and I was just paying attention on being on the rear wheel of the guy in front of me and I wasn't looking down and I hit a tree stump and I went down oh, and no. got up eventually caught back up past third past second and was riding second for a while then David's I guess front suspension had split essentially and so I was in first for a few laps and then I ran out of gas <laughs> So at the beginning, Taylor's like, make sure you fill up and it's full and everything. I was like, okay. So I went and I did. I, I filled it up. But I think what happened is when I dumped the bike, because then my dad timed it. So when I pulled into the pits again, he's like, you know, you should be close to empty and everything. So I take off the gas cap and I'm just barely down. So I was like, that's got to be what happened. And he's like, we'll go. I'm like, well, I'm here. Just fill up with gas. So I just barely started overflowing. I took off again and finished out the race. And then another thing on the lap five or six, I had broken the foot peg off on the right side i mean i'm not gonna stop racing because of that i was like i'm gonna keep riding no matter what because i want to ride i said <laughs> i drove four hours i'm gonna ride yeah. And with the suspension, at the end, I was going to send it a little bit more and jump it and test the suspension. Sadly, I didn't get the opportunity to do that because I didn't have a foot peg. <laughs> but while there are pros and cons, isn't is that I didn't get to jump it at the end. But the pro is I got to test more of what it was capable of, I feel like. Mm -hmm. While I couldn't stand up, I had to sit down and let the suspension do all the work. There was a rock section in the back where there was a couple whoops. And so I would just gun it and I would just squeeze my legs and let the suspension do everything mm -hmm. for me essentially and then there was one place around basically in the middle of the track where you could just it's a straight shot and you can gun it and there was this dip in the middle and same thing you could just gun it and the bike would perfectly absorb the shock and you nice. could just take off swing arm doing yeah. its job man yeah it did great so i'm glad that our pinch hitter bike came yeah. in yeah <laughs> yeah Andy. yeah thank you guys so how did you lose that foot peg in that same rock section at the beginning where it has the whoop i was turning really hard to essentially try and gain ground on the people that were in front of me and i heard something a rock hitting somewhere i wasn't sure if it was the sprocket or the foot peg and sure enough it was the foot peg when you went to go put your foot down again well it had bent back and so first i had thought that the spring loaded portion had just bent back and it was stuck yeah so i was trying to get it undone and i couldn't get it undone and then all of a sudden i looked down and it was gone well you got it undone yeah i got it undone <laughs> it just wasn't there anymore so honest thoughts on the megamoto 212 frame not so much the swing arm but just that frame as compared to your Coleman, is it too beefy? Do you feel like it's durable other than the foot peg coming off? It's a very durable bike. It's a little bit heavier, but it is a very durable bike. I had ridden one before at another gambler. It's a very comfortable bike as well for pretty much anyone. It's durable and it's sturdy. And the few laps you did get to ride with these rear suspension kit. So we've been testing that thing out for weeks. We have a few different positions. We have it mocked up. We think we're ready to go. But right now in the testing phase of it, you are essentially the first person to test it extensively. Mm. What are your thoughts on it? I mean, obviously it's a big improvement from the rigid frame. It takes it to a whole nother dynamic. So I know it's a little bit different from a Coleman to a full suspension, but my lap times improved like an average of seven seconds from my bike to that bike our engines were pretty similar but just the rear suspension being able to do all the work for me was a big big mm -hmm. difference mm -hmm. the lead group was running about two minutes and 45 seconds so to cut seven seconds off where i was was i mean a, that's was a big jump now you said that you train for these events so what does your training look like what's your like daily schedule or your weekly schedule for training depends on the weather <laughs> if it's nice i do have a track out the back side of my house i got a little whoop section a jump a part that goes down my creek and that has another jump and i'll just time myself and 30 minutes or so in these longer races i'll run like an hour or so just to kind of get 
and the rhythm of things and go power 180 i train a little bit differently kind of do intervals like switching out with me and my dad kind of do in spurts like that compared to just going since i don't ride the whole 180 minutes i split Mm -hmm. it up so we kind of take turns and gauging it that way so have you and your dad always raced and trained together or is that like in the past couple of years kind of thing so my dad got i got him into racing about six months after I had started. He lives about three hours away from me, so when he comes to visit, he'll usually ride. Or a buddy that he works with, we got him into riding as well. So he's got a place, he's kind of made a flat track. He's talked about making a bigger bigger track as well at his place. We'll go to his buddy's house and we'll ride there as well. So we'll go to back and forth to each other's places. Okay. Is this gentleman also a part of the Ginger Minis crew? Yes, yes he is. Okay. How yeah. many people are in Ginger Minis? And what is Ginger yeah, Minis? Yeah, explain what is Ginger Minis? Ginger Minis is something my dad had came up with. I had the boring name Porter Mini Bikes, just our last name. <laughs> One day he sent me this logo and he's like, I'm like, I love that. I don't think that's, <laughs> I think that's awesome. Yeah. And so it's me, my dad, the guy my dad works with, my little brother, and I guess kind of my older brother. Okay. He's kind of like the racer X of the family. He yeah. just shows up sometimes. Yeah. He don't really him. ride a whole lot, but he just kind of rides for me. Now, paint the picture. Is everyone redhead? No, I'm actually the only red. Well, my niece, she's the second redhead in our family now. Whoa. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I was the only one for a long time. So everyone else is just honorary ginger. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, are you guys all racing as a team, all four or five of you, or just you and your dad? Me and my dad probably race the most consistent. Recently, the guy he works with has been to a few races, and then my younger brother plays D1 football, so he's just finishing up there, and like he, my dad's like, he can't get hurt, he can't no. do any of this. So once he graduates this year, I'm going to try and get him out to some more races and riding. May I ask, where does he play at? Uh, Ball State. Oh. Nice. It's the MAC-10. Okay, nice, man. Yep. Is he going to try and go into the league after, or he's kind of like, No, eh. he, he did have a career-ending injury on his mm. back, so he's had kind of had a rough go playing sorry to hear that yeah. man he was good he was gonna start his first year and then he had some injuries to his shoulder and then next year he was good to go and then he had a back problem and like we'll let you keep your full ride but he's just just finishing out at least he's finishing out his gonna have his degree and everything yep. and he gets to say he played d1 football yeah which, that's more football than i've ever played yep. man and he's graduating early too a year early whoa so he's a smart kid good on shouts yeah shouts out to your brother yeah shouts out to littlest porter <laughs> yeah. i guess right well i wouldn't say littlest he's six four three hundred pounds <laughs> oh man so possibly the biggest porter. <laughs> yes okay <laughs> yes man oh he's gonna be a beast out on the track yeah. though okay now can people find ginger minis on instagram or anything or? yeah actually i did kind of switch which I profiled at Ginger Minis. My presence hasn't been that great right now. Been more focused on getting bikes ready and going to the racing than I'm hoping to start anyway. Now, do you see a future in building bikes or engines or just strictly just racing? I would like to. It's something also I've thought about doing. I know when I come to races, people are like, man, that's a nice engine and all this. You know, could you build me one? And when I find out I'm from Wichita, Kansas, they're like... (laughs) That's a deterrent? Yeah. Wait, just because it's far away or because Kansas is known as a place where engines don't work. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's so far and like, well, how are you going to get the oh, engine okay. to me and stuff like that? Oh, okay, got you, man. Yeah, but I mean, I build all my own engines and get parts, obviously, from you guys and, oh, nice, and man. then race them. Have you gotten a chance to chill and hang out with Master Tilly downstairs, Paul Crafton? Yeah, I did a little bit. Okay. Got to meet him. And He's going to be moving on at some point soon. Not moving on. Like, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Not, like, all about a, a new location, I guess. Uh, yeah, he, he's moving into a larger okay. area because yeah. he has a large volume of engines that gotcha. need to get fixed. Yeah. Gotcha. So, I was like, he's what? actually dying. Sorry, Paul. You heard it here first. Yeah, I, I meant to tell you the other day, Paul. Yeah, you're expiring. My bad, man. <laughs> you may have said it. Where is home right now for you? Wichita, Kansas. Oh, you actually? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you came all the way down for a tomb race and you were still up in Kansas. Yeah, most of my races, I guess the closest was the Lime, which is four hours. And then most of the races since they're in Texas are six to nine hour drive. So what time did you drive in this morning? Okay. Drove in last night and stayed the night. I'm sorry. I thought, Just, I <laughs> thought you, good? you were in local. Texas. <laughs> yeah, I no, I'm in Kansas. Oh, what? man. You drove all the way down here for this? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> thank you so <laughs> much. Man. Mini bikes are awesome. Man. Yeah. It's worth it. I got a new respect. Hey, I got uh-huh. even bigger respect now. So I guess talking about, like, you think mini bikes are awesome, but yeah. where do you see mini bikes and mini bike racing going? Let's say, you know, next five, ten years. What do you think is going to happen? What are we looking at for the sport? You know, I would like to get a group up in Kansas because there's not really a big group up there.
there that races. I think Texas is, for me, the closest. So Lime's a good race, obviously. It's a lot of fun. Shout out to Mark. The 180 is a lot of fun. I think races like that is what brings out a lot of people. NTX, DCMB, they have races throughout the year as well. I'm hoping we continue to grow and grow the sport, not just in certain states, but all across the U.S. Like national level racing. Yeah. I mean, that would be really cool and be like a, a dream. Mm. to race in a bunch of different states. I know they got flat out Fridays and uh, Mama Tried up in Wisconsin and stuff mm -hmm. like that, and the, the Booney bikes. And I've wanted to do that. North Carolina, I know, has some stuff. Florida has some stuff. I'm hoping instead of just certain states, we get to the point where it's nationwide. What do you think's holding holding us back? Like as a community, do you think it's that there's not enough communication between these parts? Because obviously there's people everywhere riding these things. I mean, since it is in certain states, some people don't want to drive that far. That makes sense yeah and there's certain races i mean if it's like a just a local group and there's maybe 10 people you do have people that want a lot of competition and want groups of like 40 or 50 people to go against which i get that and the more competitions more fun the selective locations right now is what's slowing the growth across the u.s now have you ever tried drag racing i have not Ooh, we're gonna have to bring you down sometime <laughs> we'll go out to yellow belly as a yeah. thing yeah yeah i did see flacco's episode and i had talked to him a little bit about it at the 180 about his race bike like man that bike is insane i was like i don't know whose bike that is like, that's my bike <laughs> i was asking him everything he's got in it and how fast it'll go mm. I, it's insane and then i saw some footage of him the one he's making here with the little rascal frame oh yeah. the drag skull god dang that bike is insane it is yeah. insane it's gonna be even crazier because we're gonna try to hit 100 miles an hour on that thing yeah i don't doubt it that bike is fast. Would you want to go 100 miles an hour? Yes. Oh, for real? Oh. On a drag bike within a quarter mile? I'm trying to go as fast as I can right now. My flat track bike, I know it's really tough, and there's a lot of people that are faster than me still. Russell's really fast. Russell Collins. Ferris is really fast. So at the big old Speedway on their big track, man, those guys, they got the right lines, and they are fast. So, mm. And I haven't had much time on that track, but I want to get better at that place so I can <laughs> try and hang with them. You are the first person on here that's, when Jason mentions 100 miles per hour, you were all for it. Yeah, <laughs> I want to go fast. Everybody else is scared. I've <laughs> gotten to... I think the fastest that I've gotten to right now is 75. Okay. Okay. And But that's on flat track, or is that just in your backyard? I'll take it out to, I live out in the country, so I'll take it out to one of those rural highways and just go on a straight line see what the engine can do. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, yeah. man. Do you ever mess around on go-karts and stuff like that, or have yes. you messed around on go-karts? Yes. Another buddy of mine that I work with, I built him a go-kart. I guess I redid his go-kart. Oh, They nice. had an old frame, and I built it for his nieces and nephews, put the Predator 212 on it and all that. So I don't get to ride him a whole lot because I don't own any myself, but I usually ride his. Oh, nice, man. Yeah. That's the benefit of fixing yeah. up other people's stuff is you yeah. get to go mess yeah. around on it. Yeah. Are there any other courses in Kansas? Or I mean, like other, you know, I know down here in Texas we have you know, quite a few different tracks. Do you have anywhere where you could host your own race? I have somewhat kind of tried. There's not really a whole lot of opportunities. There's one track in Wichita that I probably could. And then there was another one I was getting together in Kansas City where my folks live and they were all for it. And they're like, you know, but you got to get insurance and everything for it. And I was like, okay. So I was working on that. And then eventually after this race season, they shut down. That's also oh, no. a common thing. That's happened to us twice yeah. with the Go Power Sports yeah. 180. Just big lots of land. We have a bunch of people just coming in and land grabbing at yep. the moment so definitely crazy out there yep. darn californians moving to texas am <laughs> i right hit them up right here <laughs> yes. public enemy number one well, at least you bring value, though. I There's guess. There's some others that just are a waste of space. <laughs> Talking to you. Let's, let's get into politics. <laughs> yeah. And that's when Jason started beef with the entire state of California. <laughs> I got no beef. You're on California. notice, guys. I love you guys, especially like the Compton LA guys, because oh. those guys are going fast. They are. I saw the video where you guys went out to Compton, and those bikes are crazy, what those guys do. and Day Day, <sighs> and then the whole Volts crew. You need, yeah, those it's guys crazy. are fast, man. Yeah. They're a whole different level. <laughs> they <laughs> yeah. really are. They're going to be out here for the Pulse Pulsar picnic. picnic. Are you going to be at that? I'm hoping to. I'm in the process of moving, so oh. hopefully the closing okay. weekend is Because the next weekend. day we're going to be drag racing. Oh, 
Oh, you are going to be uh, okay. going up against the Compton guys. They're yeah, coming out here. What a perfect weekend. Yeah. No fruit. You got to come on down. Yeah. I'll try and come down. That's what May 5th and 6th. Actually later, May 20th. Okay. Then I can probably make it. You got a little time. Wait, are you moving to Texas? No. <laughs> oh, where are you moving? I'm just moving up a little. I'm still going to be in the Wichita area. Now, do you work in the Wichita area? Yeah, well? I do. Why don't you move down to Texas? <laughs> just curious. Because um, he's not Californian. Well, <laughs> I'm not Cal. <laughs> if you're down here for all these races. I know. I've thought about it. I love my job right now. I started, I'll be there two years, and I love where I'm at. Been something I've thought about. What do you do in your alter ego, like, when you're not brapping around on mini bikes? But what are you doing? Pretty much mini bikes all the time. Really? I mean, during the holidays and stuff, I don't know if you guys have ever played... Dungeons and Dragons? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Quiplash. No clue. Oh! Where like you a, type in You're your, talking about um, Jackbox games. Yeah, it'll be like, it gives you weird questions, and yeah. you will type in your answer on your phone, and then it goes on the TV, and people vote on their favorite answers. And I love that. Man. People, there'll be questions that are like, I can't remember some of the questions. Name the worst, like, roller coaster you can yeah. think of or something. The stuff like that, or if we try and get opportunities to put mini bike answers in there, me and my dad are going to do it. Oh, okay, <laughs> got like, you. Like, what's the coolest thing that you will be known for once you die? And then I'll be, like, riding mini bikes. That's, stuff like that. Mini bike is life. Pretty much. Okay, nice, man. Yeah. So you guys own Quiplash? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. It's a game by Jackbox. Okay. What's your, like, job job? I make design for the highways. Whoa! Up in uh, Kansas. Graphic me. design stuff? or No, so me and my manager, the guy that's above me, we will put a design together, basically figure out what aggregates we want to use for that job. Okay. So you're still pounding the pavement even when you're not riding a mini bike. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah. gotcha. It's gotta be great for designing your own tracks and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think if you build it, they will come. I used to talk about that down in your house, having a little bit of a I know. I thought now. about hosting a race there, but I don't know if I have enough. Do it. Land. If there's anyone in the <laughs> Wichita area who wants to race, just get yeah. Ginger Minis on Instagram. Yeah. Yep. Andrew Porter said, come over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to race, let me know and I can get something set up. Oh, there we go, man. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back after these messages from our sponsors. It's hot outside. Really hot. And it's about to get even hotter. When you use coupon code SHIRT25, you'll get 25% off all shirts at GoPowerSports.com for the month of August. That includes our newest designs hot off the presses, as well as old friends that'll look good for years to come. Quit sweating in that same shirt you've been rocking since high school and start sweating in some fancy new duds that'll have everyone saying, Wow, wow, wow. That's hot, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot, that's hot. That's hot. <laughs> Head to GoPowerSports.com and use Shirt25 until August 31st, 2023. We can't keep you from sweating in the heat, but we can make you look good while doing it. That's code SHIRT25, good from now until August 31st. Stay fast, stay cool, and as always, ride on. And we're back. Do you have any cool builds that you're working on? Are you building a special bike for this year's series of races? Yeah, I want to do a couple of them. So I've got a doodle bug that I'm doing, Megamoto 80 front suspension, and then the axle hangers that you guys provide. I got them welded on there. I got it painted. I think the color is stone black. Whoa. Oh, so I got it powder okay. coated. I'm going to do like an all midnight kind of theme on this one with the 10 inch wheels, the Dunlop tires, and then a stage four, stage five ish engine stepping it up kind of the bigger tracks like the quarter miles and stuff nice. okay. and then the megamoto 80 with a swing arm kit as well i'm gonna do like a sparkling cherry red and then the swing arm and accessories i'm gonna do chrome that one will kind of be the same style engine with the dunlop tires 10 inch wheels and then the stage four engine different races require different engines enduro riding is probably good with a stock engine with the stage one or stage two you don't need to go too crazy with those so that would be if i did do enduro riding with that frame i'd put a stage two kit on it that'd be enough power to to get me where i needed to go as far as as those two builds and then i know we had talked about the um trail master i would like to do one of those eventually okay. and get one of those bigger bikes you also got to take around our 
80 frame with this juggernaut yes, at yes. the flat track at yes. the line. What would you think of that? That was a lot of fun because I had never really ridden the Megamoto 80 with rear suspension yet. Even on a flat track, it was really smooth. There was some bumps I got to take it over while driving it over to the track. and It was interesting to see how it performed. It was a lot of fun. That was awesome. Pretty man. sweet ride because it it's a awesome. different stance. It feels like a tiny dirt bike, really. I like how it sits taller, yeah. honestly. We plan on having those 10-inch billet rims that you saw on those bikes mm. here pretty soon. We're just waiting on some hubs, but that's yeah. probably like the longest list of people waiting for yeah. are those rims. Yeah. Yeah, we had the stage one juggernaut kit when you rode it. We had the stage three on it now, I think. So after we're oh, really? this. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, because I didn't even know about that until Taylor had told me about it. Not and sure. so then I had looked it up and I was like, okay, probably gonna have to buy some of those now. <laughs> yeah, makes a difference, especially with the stage two or whatever that's down there. He's like revving it into like 35, 3800 RPMs or it sounds like aggressive. I mean, and this thing is like ready yeah. to shoot out the cannon. Yeah. Pretty dope. What race are you most looking forward to this year? The 180. Redemption. Yes. Yeah. Everyone's on notice now. I know. GPS 180, third anniversary, Redemption. Well, I'm going to try to follow you because I want to take my hurricane out there, and I don't plan on racing it, but I want to film it in the pack. So I'll try to be one of the bikes, and I'll try to find you, especially <laughs> if you plan on being first, man. That'd, that'd be a great story. Yeah. I think I'm going to go a little bit different strategy this year, just because I don't know how long my dad's going to be able to ride with his shoulder. Oh, so okay. I might have to ride longer. So instead of going in short bursts, going as fast as I can, and I might have to pace it back just a touch. So kind of train for more like kind of distance yeah. rather than sprinting it. Yeah. Okay. What is the coolest experience you've had riding in a mini bike race? Actual experience? Or something you've seen too? I mean, for me, I like crowded races when you're passing a bunch of people or it's a bigger challenge like the 180 or the Lime 100 where you have all these people around you. I think it makes it more challenging to, I guess, get past people because in the wood section at like the Lime, it was hard to pass people. So you had to stay right on their tail until you got out of the wood section. Then you could gun it and get past them and then you're both pushing each other down this long straight going as fast as you can yeah. pushing those stage two kits 50 miles an hour so you like the thrill of it you like passing people yeah and i can definitely relate yeah yeah <laughs> but i like stuff like that and then the flat track i've been to the colin edwards texas tornado boot camp a few times okay. i love that track that's kind of my niche Got the short burst with the turns and stuff like that. That's kind of my favorite style of flat track racing is, yeah, going in the circles fun and stuff, but I like the different turns and stuff like that as well. Variety. Yeah. Keeps it interesting. Yeah. Who is the person that you're most excited to like race against or go head to head against? David Rogers, as far as the enduro riding, he was in first at the Lime and he probably would have won the whole thing if his bike hadn't broke. And then I haven't been in the same class as Taylor yet. So I would like to go against Taylor as well. I think he's been banned from racing for a while. Oh, man. <laughs> I know. He Cause, keeps cause getting he's, hurt. Yeah, each time I show up to race, are you riding dead? No, my shoulder still yeah, hurt. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Or this happened, that happened. So. Broke my neck. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I did race him in the line, the first one, but he was a part of a different class. and So they kind of staggered the starts. So the first group, stock went off, and then 30 minutes later, my class went, and then 30 minutes later, his class went. And so while I was out there a little bit, I mean, we weren't part of the same class oh okay did you like that better than what they did this year i think this year the way the track was set up it was more necessary for them to do it the way they did but i liked it with everyone out there because that's more people to pass and more yeah. challenges <laughs> in my opinion that's the kind of stuff i like some people would probably say i'm too aggressive with it i'm sorry but that's how i like riding you can't change how you're built man yeah <laughs> Okay, let's talk about, like, the toughest experience you've had riding on a bike. I went to Tennessee for a gambler back in 2020. It was at a rock quarry. It was supposed to be a 200-minute race, but they also did, like, a winning out and a losing out. And so the losing out is if you're at the back of the pack, then you're finished until you get to the last group, and then your winners are decided from there. And then the winning out... If you earn first on the first lap, then you're done second lap if you're the next one and so forth until you get to the top three riders. And I was doing the win and out race and my seat had fallen off of my bike, my Megamoto 80. I was running a rigid frame, no front suspension, nothing. My seat had fallen off, so someone had passed me, and then I ran a whole lap without my seat, yeah. and my butt was just hitting that frame for another three miles on that rock course. Okay, ultra hardtail. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Did you have any other times that were, like, real tough that you're riding? Yeah, so that 
other race I had previously talked about where it was me and two other people until we went through everybody. After the races, there was a triple I wanted to jump. And so I had basically went off the track so I could hopefully gain enough speed. And I just shot it and didn't end up making it. And I crashed and broke off my throttle cable. You have the whole throttle assembly. And I wanted to keep riding. So what I did is I just held on with one hand and had my brake lever. And then I'd reach down on the Predator engine and tap the <laughs> The throttle down there that way i could keep riding i'm gonna be honest when you said broke i kept it you're like oh i missed the jump and i broke i was like waiting for like collarbone no, shoulders no. you're like no. no i just broke my throttle cable yeah so all i did was i just reached down and i just started just doing it like this like yeah. no, no biggie have you seen anybody else do that or was, that was just the first thing that came in your head that's just the first thing that came in my head i was like i still have a stage one kit on it so i can still use it even though i don't have yeah. the actual throttle assembly anymore but. anybody else would have been like all right i'm out i guess i'm done yeah, yeah. <laughs> should we make a race class for that <laughs> <laughs> that that would, we call it Suicide King. It would be, especially for the 180. Holy cow. Oh, man. Yeah. That'd be insane. You need like four hands on your handlebars yeah. during that race. One thing for the 180, I've talked to Paul about before, message him an Ironman class. One rider. I'm down to add it. That makes the most sense. Okay. I can see it happen. Yeah. It's just another trophy. You're all still starting at the same time. Yeah. Right? Oh, so no one, so no trade outs, no just nothing. one rider. Can you have another bike? One bike, one person. Yep. One bike, one person. <laughs> person okay i Iron like man it man. we should do a class where it's multiple people on one bike all the time like they're all, all the <laughs> no, but yours That's makes the most sense. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Bernie. No, yours is scratched. I'm going to do it. This is going to be me and Zane <laughs> riding the whole race. That is a great idea. That's an aha moment right there. Yeah. No, I know it's an extra thing to add, but no, I don't know. It's just something I thought trophy. about. No, and also, I think it does add a more competitive component because at that point, you can't get off the bike. Like, you can't trade out with someone if you're like, oh, my tailbone's a little sore yeah. or whatever. Like, you got to keep on going, man. Because I think there is a couple people that have done it, but they're just racing one of the classes. But I yeah. think in Iron Man, you might get more people that want to ride solo. That just want to ride solo, yeah. Is there a, an Iron Man per soft tail? You kind of I guess so, yeah. Right? You have to have two. I guess, yeah, it should be because, yeah, Iron Man soft tail versus Iron Man hard tail, that's going to be a tough yeah. one. Then that means if you try to do you won't be able to race with your dad then. Well, no, dad's going to have to get his own bike. Yeah, I've thought about if we did that to have him run it as well, Iron Man, and have us both run Iron Man together. Oh, that would be a fun ride, though, because, you know, you yeah. guys can kind of spur each other on. Or you know. little brother. I would like to bring him and have him race, so. Bring him out, and he can just pull the bike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did you camp at the last 180? Yes, I did. I was right across from Paul. You didn't oh. want to get your bike stolen no. again. So. I told my dad, I said, I'm not staying at a hotel. I'm like, I got the bike I want now. We're going to camp. Oh, we talked about this before we had the cameras rolling and before we were recording and stuff. But the other guy that you guys ride with, he's the one who had the really cool Evil Knievel bike. Yeah, he had the Lime 100. He okay. has an Evil Knievel bike. We'll throw a photo up here somewhere. It'll yeah. be up there, guys. Yeah. Just look up there. But we'll get a photo of that one up there. And we can, if you have a photo of your bike too, we'll throw it up there. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a name for your bike? No. Is this you one of those like I, mini bikes usually? I do. Unfortunately. What a nerd. <laughs> what is your mini bike's name? It was the Dominator. Uh, Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> and I think you were riding the Dominator because it was the Mega Moto 212. That was yes, that's bike. right. That was your bike. You rode the Dominator. Yep. That's Did you right. name your GoPro? 256. <laughs> 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 So you don't name your bikes? Is this a thing in the community where people like either do or don't name their bikes or no one really gives a crap? Some people might or have something they call it. I know some people uh, do. Okay. The guy my dad works with that we got into mini bikes, he had one he called Betty White and had a <laughs> Betty White face on it <laughs> on the on the front plate. <laughs> he had another one that he called it Rooster and then the Evil Knievel bike. Oh, did the Rooster one have like a coxcomb on it no, or something? No, it didn't. Oh, darn. No, okay. No. That would have been dope. Do we no. need to cut that, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll blank it out. What? <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> oh, <my>. yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> okay, man. Yeah. Uh, no, because I know Flacco named his. What did he name it? Casper. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, that's yeah, right. Friendly Ghost. Yeah. I think that's why he named it Casper. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. That look you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never watched someone's soul leave their body before <laughs> like that. And it, then maybe that's why when you take off. Oh, oh there you man. go. Oh. <laughs> Andrew, you are a shockingly insightful individual, man. <laughs> you uh, have a 256 gigabyte memory card, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Give it to you guys. 
What's the most watched movie you've ever watched? <laughs> what, what is your most watched movie? What is, yeah, what's your go-to movie? I wouldn't say it's a movie, more of a show. Ooh, what show? The Office. Oh, high five. Uh, I gotta show you all my Office figurines. Oh, uh, yeah. There. yeah. <laughs> okay. it's, he's got every character. <laughs> How yeah. many times have you finished The Office? I lost track. Yeah, same here. And I've gone through, I'm watching the super fan episodes like a third time Did now. you like them? Yeah, I do. Like, I watched the first season of the Super Fan episodes. Probably need to get to the second season. So, wait, what is Super Fan? It's, it's just extra content yeah, that they content. couldn't fit on the actual show in the runtime. Oh. One, like, deleted scenes that they had to cut. Oh, so they, like, put it back in? Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. I yeah, feel okay. like I'm just so used to the regular season. I'm like, yeah. I don't remember this part. Yeah, I know. <laughs> is this it's on Netflix? Peacock. 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 Pe okay, I have Peacock. It all works out. Jason wears his GoPro when he's watching Peacock just so he can use his new GoPro. <laughs> it's brand new. It's got two <laughs> <laughs> Not one movie that you've seen more than the other? Come on, man. Probably The Dark Knight. Ooh, Ooh. That's a good one, man. Heath, Heath Ledger. It, yeah, Heath Ledger and the fact that he passed on because he thought he was the Joker. Right? <laughs> I don't think... <laughs> you know, guys, I heard this thing about Marilyn Manson. <laughs> you hear about this? He got his ribs removed. <laughs> Dark Knight is a great movie. It's just yeah. so long. It is. It's like 256 gigs. It's <laughs> <laughs> been a good movie. I think of mine was Dumb and Dumber. Do you watch Dumb and Dumber? Yeah, I would say I really liked the second one. I know it's kind of a lot. It felt like part of it was kind of a redo from the first one, though. But yeah, I, I like haven't even Dumb seen the second one, actually, yeah. yet. This is so. where Jason's age, or all our age shows, because we're like Dumb and Dumber. He's like, no, part two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah and I was it just, like, I was I've seen the same. first one. I just I'm used to the second one, but after watching both of them, you know, there's just scenes where they reenacted. Yeah. It just feels like, yeah, it's just kind of retreading yeah. the old. They just yeah. redid it. Like the part where they're in the car and that guy sitting in the middle and they're like the most annoying sound in the world. <laughs> oh, yeah. They redid that. And <laughs> Can you guys try to do that sound right now? All right, here we go. No, 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 no. I was actually going to say, I now have like three sounds I need to add to the soundboard <laughs> just off this episode. <laughs> So yeah, we're reaching the end of the show. Andrew, thank you for coming out. Where thank can guys. people find you if they want to talk to you about getting some engine work done? Where can they see you at a race just to chill and chew the fat? To find me on social media, like I said, my social media presence isn't the greatest right now, but Ginger Minis is my Instagram. Uh, you can hit me up on Facebook, just Andrew Porter. And races, I know I'll be at the 180 Dope. for sure. And then there is a vintage mini bike race down in Mount Enterprise. It's like a ten thousand dollar race in October that I'm going to. Ooh. I'm going to be there as well. Where's Mount Enterprise? Yeah, I know about that. It is probably two hours southeast of here. It's probably forty five minutes west of Louisiana. They're giving out ten thousand dollars for the purse prize is ten thousand, and it's there's a hundred entries, a hundred dollars to get in, and like I said, they're going to max out at a hundred people, and I think the top twenty are payout. Very wow. cool, man. Okay, how do I find this? What's it called again? It's at the Yellow Rose Canyon. It's like vintage mini bike races for the riches. Oh, okay. Is what check it out. We'll check it out. Yeah. Rose See Canyons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's you, like, I can't race in any GPS races, so I'm just going to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. If you go to the Yellow Rose Canyon on Facebook, I'm sure it'll pop up. Okay. okay. Dope, check dope, dope. That's what I've got planned for right now. Okay, cool. And hopefully we can get you down here for Pull Start Picnic. I know yep. you got a lot of stuff going on, so but we'll see if we can line up those calendars, man. Yep. It'd be nice to... We'd love to have you down more. Yep, You've sure. been an awesome guest, and we'd yep. love to see you here well, again. Thank you, guys. It's been awesome being down here. Well, thank you. So, everyone else, be sure to like, subscribe, and ride on. Wow. We did it. Another one down, we guys. Won. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh. Uh. <laughs> uh. Uses just weird noises. <laughs> <laughs>